Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Welcome back for part two of cleaning up my Avatar Grove. It's a grove of old growth cedar trees. And I'll be pruning all the trees up and doing the landscape work, getting it all ready to grow in spring. In part one of this series, I brought the forest out of the basement where it had been for the winter, brought it outside on the bench and gave it a good watering. And then I looked at the overall design of the forest and decided my first step would be to prune up the individual trees so it doesn't look like a giant hedge. To make this forest look like an old growth cedar forest, I need all the trunk lines to be absolutely vertical. And I noticed that there's a lot of the trunk lines that are kind of splaying out from the vertical. And I think that's because the top of the trees grew and it kind of pushes all the trees apart from each other. So to give that really mature look to the trees, I'll have to prune up the top canopies and kind of straighten out all the trunks the best I can. The common name for these trees is cedars in this area. They're actually called a Thuja occidentalis. They're a native tree to this part of the world. When I'm pruning the cedar trees, I want to prune them back as far as I can to keep the trees nice and compact. But I always have to leave some green growth on the tips of the branches that draws sap through the branch and keeps that branch alive. If you were to remove all the green foliage off the branches on a cedar, that branch would just die. I'll begin pruning this forest by working on all the front trees, pruning them to a tight conical type shape, and then I'll work my way towards the back. So here I go. I'll start at the apex up here and always finding a good apex. I'll try and keep all my clippings in a pile and I'm sure by the end of all this pruning I'll have quite a pile of cedar clippings. I'll be taking a lot off these trees and I'll be doing a combination of scissor pruning and finger pinching to kind of get the ends of the uh, foliage so they're not so ragged so it, it looks a little neater and a little tidier. I have my leader picked for the top of the tree which is right here and all the others will be shorter branches and I'll reduce them back as far as I dare on this tree. Some of the coarser branches up in the apex I'll just remove them entirely and there's some finer foliage that's grown in over the summer and I can replace them with those newer branches. That way I don't get thick branches up in the apex of the tree. So there's one I've removed that's uh, fairly thick at the base and it, it yeah I can replace it with a new shoot that's just you know the thickness of the foliage. So that'll look much better up here in the apex. When I'm printing this conical shape I'm also keeping in mind that my lowest branches I want them drooping. The middle branch is more horizontal and the branches up in the apex kind of reaching skyward. Ducks are very excited to be outside in this nice sunny spring-like day. We are supposed to get snow tomorrow so I'm sure this pruning will take many days. I got a late start at it today so. These cedars once you start pruning away it kind of opens the tree up and you can see more and more of the branching and it allows you to get in there and select the branches more carefully. At first it's just a big jumbled mess. But you can see the start of the apex here. It's just starting to be defined. You can see some of the long shoots I'm pinching back and pruning back. Trying to keep the apex nice and light. Smells good these when you prune them. You get that nice aromatic cedar smell coming. Really nice to prune. I got very little dieback on these trees over the winter, which is good. I find when you first repot a cedar into a bonsai pot, you get a lot of dieback because you've probably done a lot of root pruning. And it's got to kind of rebuild all those canals that, or channels or veins that feed the upper canopy. So when you sever some of the roots, it, a corresponding branch will die up in the apex, but uh, or up in the canopy. 
But once you get them kind of sorted out and you're down to routine pruning, you don't get a lot of dieback on them. So I've got a branch up here in the apex that's quite thick. Um, I'll try and get a close up of that. So right up here, if you can see, there's a fairly thick branch that starts beside the trunk. And it's too thick to be up in the apex area. So I need to remove that entirely and replace it with some finer foliage. So that branch will get cut right out. I'm trying to keep all this area really, really light up top. So I'll cut that branch right out like that. There's the thick part of the branch there. You can't be in a hurry when you do these forests because they take a long time. Most of the trees in this forest are very young, except for the main tree here. These have a lot of growing and maturing to do. Um, I do like the contrast between the thicker tree and some of the smaller ones, but uh, yeah, they have a lot, of, a lot of growing and refining to do these trees before they kind of match the style of the main tree. On this forest at the present moment, all these smaller trees on the right hand side are almost identical to the trees on the left hand side. So I'll prune up all these trees on the left hand side first, you know, getting them all nice and compact and tidied up. And then we can see the difference between the compact trees versus these shaggy ones on the right hand side, just to show the effects of the pruning. So I'll, I'll keep working away at this and we'll come back. It's been a couple of days now. I haven't been able to get outside to the Avatar Grove because it's been really cold out. Yesterday was really cloudy and the greenhouse didn't warm up at all. I'll show you some of the snow that we got on the uh, bonsai trees. Just got a light dusting of snow. See it up there at the top of the hill. Down in this section. Bit of snowfall. That's kind of a nice winter scene now. My spruce here, it has a dusting of snow on it also. The sun's just starting to hit this area. I'm kind of waiting for it to hit the greenhouse because right now the greenhouse is in the shade. It's really cold out, so. Won't be much longer before the sun hits this area. I can get back to work. It's really quite cold out here. <laughs> Hands are getting cold already. The sun still hasn't hit the greenhouse, but I'll keep working away anyway. Getting all these trees pruned back. There was a rock I considered using at the edge of the landscape here. I'll set it aside. I don't think I'll use it. Um, not in this place anyway. I think it makes this corner look a little heavy, so. But I, I definitely may use it somewhere else. I'll show you a little side project I've been working on. This is an old bicycle. Um, I think it's late 40s, maybe 50s, um, 1950s, kind of at the latest, I think. This bicycle was in the basement of our house when we moved in. 23 years ago and it just sat there and I thought oh I should get that thing fixed up someday so the other day I took it in they had to retap the cranks for the uh, pedals to thread in and the only pedals you could get were sort of BMX pedals so I'll probably look around for some older pedals um, the wheels this is a roll fast bicycle you can see the front name tag here which is a metal riveted on name tag roll fast uh, it originally had smaller wheels and balloon tires but someone's replaced both the wheels and the handlebars with kind of more modern ones I think the stem is still original it looks from the photos I saw it looks like the original stem on it the original spring seat which is really cool and it's really comfortable 
and it's got a rear carrier here which is kind of handy I'll probably put a wooden box on the back of it so I can you know carry things in it groceries and stuff up front on the bicycle there was a light that is supposed to mount right here that's missing it was kind of one of those streamlined kind of looking lights uh, it's got really really nice patina on this thing uh, if you can see it it's a kind of a blue color and it's just got a bit of shine to it here and there there's a dent in the gas tank a couple of them yeah it's just a perfect perfect bike kind of goes along with the uh, orchard truck you know having that patina to it being an old old thing so it rides really nicely it's amazing to ride you ride really upright so a really cool bike I'm looking uh, forward to finishing it off with maybe a light on the front and a box on the back and get some more period correct handlebar grips maybe and stuff on it and it's not a speed machine but it's uh, really comfortable that spring seat is just unbelievable on bumps and it rides really nicely a little hard getting up the hills but other than that it's great it's got a coaster brake in the back so you just kind of pedal backwards to put the brake on to the rear wheel no hand brakes or anything really simple bike so it'll be really fun working on this over the next while you know kind of finishing it off it's a beautiful antique bike to ride around town and get groceries in the Sun is on the greenhouse now so I'll go back inside and continue work in a nice warm greenhouse Here's a view of all the seedlings I planted at the back here. They're starting to mature up a bit. They're getting their adult foliage. When they start out in life, they're just little spiky things. You can see a spiky one here that's not looking so good. But most of them have made it. They're looking really good. They'll fill in that back, you know, add another element of depth to this forest. They'll grow up and up into the canopy here yeah so it'll look quite good I was brushing away the roots on the main tree here just getting them the moss off them and the lichen and exposing the surface roots there's one here I think I'll have to remove it doesn't it doesn't look very good it comes off at a funny angle yeah I'll do that now I'll remove this one root here just cutting it off like that that looks better now the roots kind of flow down into the soil better I'm going to give these seedlings their first pruning and all I'm going to do is remove these lower branches off them so the foliage is up a little higher so they look more tree like instead of kind of bushes back here so here I go I'll just remove some of these lower branches and you have to wait until you have enough foliage up top before you can remove these lower branches and I think this is the year so just like that so they look a little more tree like now I'll give them a little more light here too got some branches that are getting quite long at the back here that will have to be reduced way back to get light in at these little seedlings I'm just standing back having a look at the progress on the left hand side you can see it's quite a bit more airy you can see each of the tree trunks more clearly uh, the foliage up top doesn't look like a hedge anymore you can see individual trees so it, it's coming um, I'm pruning back as far as I can on the trees and again these trees are really young they're you know very very young for a bonsai tree they're they're 
basically just little saplings that have grown up. Um, so I'm going to start on the right hand side now, kind of getting all those trees pruned up. And then uh, I'll be tackling the main tree and then all the landscaping. So I've got a long way to go. You'll notice that on these cedars that the more branches the tree has, the finer the foliage gets. So you can see on the main tree, it's really fine. But when I first planted this tree, it was super coarse. It was like, you know, really coarse, like a cedar hedge. It was terrible, in fact. And over the years, you know, as it gets more and more branching and the resources are limited in this pot, so the foliage gets finer and finer and more delicate and miniature looking as the tree gets older. So, yeah, so don't be surprised at first if all your branches on your newly planted cedars look very coarse and tough looking. And then as it gets older, they, you know, they get more feathery looking and more delicate. And uh, it starts to look more like a miniature tree instead of this coarse, kind of ugly looking foliage. I've still got a few to go at the back here. Some really long branches. Just need pruning back and tidying up. Picking the branches I want to keep. And... But you know, the more I take away, the more I can see the structure of the trees and the more you can make decisions on pruning what you're keeping. I've removed a lot of branches. Some of the thicker branches and yeah, it's just a matter of going through all the trees. And it, it, as I said, it takes quite a while because there's a lot of trees in this forest. There's a lot of decisions to make. So if you love pruning, forests are fantastic. So here I've got kind of a strange branch coming off here I can remove. Like that. It takes quite a bit off get that more upright form on this tree. Right now it's a little, a little funny looking. Move this one too. So a lot of these trees when I got them they're all twisty and terrible for an old growth forest but slowly I'm kind of trying to straighten them out and simplify them to get kind of clean trunk lines. I think it'll take a lot of years before I get that impression of an old growth forest, but uh, I'll keep working away at it. That's the challenge of bonsai is sometimes you never quite know what the result will be until you get there someday. Listen to those crows, they think it's spring too. So right now in the design, I'm working on raising the the lower part of the canopy up higher to give it kind of more open space under the trees and i think that'll make it look more like an old growth forest i'll um i do have my back trees that i'll be growing in these little seedlings that'll kind of provide some foliage down lower way in the background and i i think that'll be good kind of having you know the canopies up higher on these trees that are closer to the front and maybe a little lower towards the back to look like distance trees so yeah so I'm just pruning away some of these lower branches and it gets a lot more light into the the forest floor too opening up that uh, lower part of the canopy it also allows you to get in here and kind of look up at the canopy of the trees so you can kind of get a low angle and it kind of gives you that impression you're in a forest yeah and you can go in and explore it all there's a big old thick gnarly tree at the back there a lot of old dead twisty trees or trees with dead wood that one back there yeah so the top here I'll be styling this the cathedral style where all the branches go upright 
and it's almost like mini trees going around the uh, the center of the uh, crown of the tree it'll be you know a series of small trees going around it almost so that that'll be interesting styling that I've been working on that style for a lot of years hopefully today you'll see kind of uh, well, maybe not today, but hopefully by the end of this series, you'll kind of see the styling taking shape. That's what I'm hoping for. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to continue cleaning up trees at the back, all, all, all those trees surrounding the main tree. And I think that'll be all I get done today. The sun is still shining brightly in the greenhouse here, but I don't know. I think I've got maybe another hour to go. And it'll start getting cold in here again, so. I've ended up with quite a pile of clippings here. Here they are. So that's quite a bit off, you know, the top of the forest. So here's the forest now. Let's rotate it around and have a look at it. So there it is. Um, I still have some thinning to do in some of the back trees, but uh, I'm kind of running out of light. It's getting quite dim and it's getting quite cold in here. And my feet are really cold. The top, you get the sun on your upper body here, but the, uh, the feet stay pretty cold down below. So here's where we're at with the landscape. There's the main tree. We'll look up at the trees. Yeah, so. Still a lot of work to go on the forest, but uh, that was a good start getting all those smaller trees pruned up today. I'm going to go in now and warm up my hands and my feet and we'll continue this series in part three where I'll start pruning up the main central old growth tree in that cathedral type style. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me today in the Bonsai Zone. <music>